Hi there, this is uh, Matthew, Matthew Williams, author of Something Changed, Stumbling Through Divorce, Dating and Depression. And this evening I'm feeling pretty good. I've uh, got my new haircut, I've got my new glasses uh, that make me apparently look a bit like Clark Kent, but I've been called a lot worse. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, but it hasn't always been like that. Um, we all suffer our ups and downs in life that's the nature of life um but i've uh, struggled with my mental health and i've experienced some very uh, debilitating bouts of depression and i want to read a chapter of my book that is about that so without further ado this is called i had a black dog as i faced up to the divorce and its attendant changes and stresses a dark spectre lurked on the fringes of my consciousness Winston Churchill used the metaphor of the black dog to describe his bouts of depression and, in the only sentence in which I will ever be mentioned alongside Winston Churchill, I too am the owner of a black dog. It was my intention to be a mental, mental health advocate when I began writing. In my early blog posts I referred to my previous struggles with depression and the resulting feedback from others that were struggling prompted me to want to tackle the subject head on. In reality, if I was to share my journey truthfully, I couldn't not tackle it. I've always sought to be open about my struggles. I like to try and find the positives in the challenges that I face in my life. And being an open person by nature, I felt something of a responsibility to try and help others by challenging the stigma and misunderstanding that exists around the illness. And make no mistake, depression is an illness. At its worst, it is an all-consuming, torturous, desperate, lonely, terrifying illness that has the power to strip you of your very sense of self, to crush your self-worth and your dignity, as you try and fail to face the obstacles, both real and those that are perceived in your damaged mind of everyday life. Depression closes around you like a prison and from within its walls it is all but impossible to conceive of a way to escape. You are no longer you. And it is incredibly difficult to comprehend just who and what it is that depression has turned you into. At its most severe, depression offers not a single moment of respite from its cruel grip. The physical sensation of your head trapped in a vice with a storm of terrifying thoughts constantly battering your mind, shaking, sweating, losing the ability to think and speak coherently, and the ability to spontaneously smile and laugh, cut from your being as if by a surgeon. This suffering can persist, unrelenting, for months and in some people for years. And so exhausted, the only haven appears to be beneath the covers, where we find one final cruelty as our ability to sleep is lost. There is no exaggeration here, and whilst it's impossible to conceive of unless you have experienced it, by writing about it I've always hoped that more people can at least open their minds to the idea that depression is a real and serious illness. The sense of disconnection from others, and critically from yourself, makes depression a cruelly isolating experience, and as such the words of others who understand and have prevailed over the illness can be a huge source of comfort and support when these are in desperately short supply. They can also help those that are around the sufferer to better understand what it is that they are going through. The sufferer's pain can be compounded by the sense that they are somehow to blame for their illness, that some failing or weakness on their part caused it, and that their continuing condition is their fault for not being stronger or more resilient. It must be said, being around somebody in the grip of depression is a draining, isolating and emotionally exhausting experience itself, and relationships can be rocked to their foundations. Families and friends do their best, but whilst they can visit the sufferer in their prison, they can't break down the walls. They can't provide the key. Only the sufferer themselves can do that. But the love, support and care of others, including qualified professionals, are an essential part of the cure. And when the depression passes, the bonds of love and friendship can be stronger than ever before. Therein lies an important truth of depression. It passes. There is no magic solution, no immediate fix but a gradual process of recovery facilitated by a combination of things that together help to lift the sufferer out of despair and into the brightness of a new days of hope. And there are truly no brighter days than those that follow the darkness of depression. It is difficult to accept that a black dog lies within. Following my first depression, I managed to convince myself that it was a one-off event and that in my recovery lay the proof that I had conquered whatever it was that had caused it to strike. I had to reassess that view when it returns to viciously shake me from my complacency. Now I try to maintain a balanced view of myself as someone that has the seeds of depression within, whilst not accepting as inevitable the possibility of a future episode. Vigilance is key. 
We need to understand depression as far as it is possible to understand an illness whose roots are still largely unknown and understand ourselves, our triggers and the sometimes subtle behavioural signs that indicate that the black dog may have started padding, padding along in our strips, <laughs> padding along in our slipstream. It's important to keep busy, take one day at a time and be around others whilst recognising that sometimes it is necessary to take time out to rest. Always and always to know that this too shall pass. Depression can be very difficult to admit to, but I don't fear being thought weak for admitting my struggles, because I know from experience just how much strength it takes to overcome them. So that was the first piece I uh, explicitly wrote about my mental health, so I had alluded to it before. And the key thing about that for me is that it led to, uh, I can honestly say, and this isn't um, true of everyone, but I've had nothing but positive responses to uh, to, to, to write and openly about it and it's led to some amazing opportunities for me um, you know I've spoken on telly radio I've, I've, I've contributed to various websites and yeah it's um, and clearly it's something that people do want to, a lot of people do want to talk about and better understand and, and I hope I can play my part and, and I'll play my part in, 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 in furthering that um, I hope you found that maybe useful, comforting, depending on whatever your circumstances might be. If you would like to uh, share your thoughts, I always like to hear feedback from readers or in this case, uh, viewers and listeners. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. I hope you're well and um, no doubt I'll be back sometime soon um, with a further chapter from Something Changed. Bye bye.